Hey all, so today we will discuss about lichen planus. As we all are dentists, we will mainly discuss about oral lichen planus. It is present in a lace-like pattern, lace-like pattern, similar to the lichen present all over the rocks. And planus means flat. That's why the name lichen planus. It affects both the skin as well as the mucous membrane. That's why it is known as a mucocutaneous disease. It is also known as lichen ruber planus. Lichen planus is one of the conditions that can be transformed into some of the malignant cancers such as squamous cell carcinoma. That's why it is a pre-malignant condition. Secondly, what is the causative agent? What is the etiology of the lichen planus? Uh, the main causative agent is our own immune system. That's why it is an autoimmune disease which is T cell mediated in which CD8 plus T cells. These are type of T cells only which are cytotoxic in nature. Cytotoxic cells will recognize an antigen over the keratinocytes which are associated with MHC1 which is major histocompatibility complex 1 present over the keratinocyte and will trigger the apoptosis or the cell death of these keratinocytes. So here we can conclude that our own T cells are acting against the skin layer cells or the oral mucous membrane layer cells and triggering their death. Now these cells are activated See, uh, these uh, CD8 plus T cells are activated which will release some cytokines and these cytokines will attract more and more lymphocytes to the developing lesion. Now the antigen which is associated with lichen planus is not known. Still we say that it may be a self-peptide and unmasking of this self-peptide or this antigen of the lichen planus may be due to some of the reasons such as uh, drugs, some allergen, maybe due to some mechanical trauma, stress or malnutrition. If it uh, occurs due to some of the drugs, then we call it as lichenoid drug reaction. Uh, and if it is due to some allergen, we call it as uh, contact hypersensitivity. Or this condition, if it is aggravated due to some mechanical um, trauma, then we call it as uh, Kobner's reaction, sorry, Kobner's phenomenon. Phenomenon and uh, it may be due to stress or malnutrition, etc. Sometimes lichen planus is associated with diabetes mellitus and vascular hypertension. And uh, this triad was described by Greenspan and that's why the name Greenspan syndrome. Now we will discuss about the clinical features of oral lichen planus. So firstly, it affects all racial groups with uh, female to male ratio being 1.4 is to 1. The age that is affected is older than 40 years, but it may affect young adults or children. Initially, the skin lesions which are present are smaller in diameter and discrete. After some time, these lesions, these small small lesions will combine together to form a larger lesion which we call as plaque which is larger in size. Uh, papule is basically flat topped lesion, flat topped angular you can say right. Now initially the color of the legion is red in color. After that it changes to reddish purple violaceous hue and later on the legion will be dirty brown in color. Now the legions are covered with a fine white grayish lines present all over the surface. These fine grayish white lines are known as Wickham's dry which are characteristic of lichen planus only. The lichen planus is distributed in bilaterally symmetrical pattern. It may affect um, some of the areas of the body such as flexor surfaces of the wrist and forearms. Um, secondly, the inner aspect of the thighs and knees, uh, especially the sacral area, sacral region. Now initially the papule was flat topped. But the plaque was 
uh, elevated or you know that uh, plaque is uh, elevated lesion basically larger and elevated lesion after that in chronic cases these plaques increase in size and become hypertrophic in nature now the primary symptom of uh, lichen planus is pruritus which is severe in nature and this pruritus means severe itching due to severe itching or severe pruritus the patient will be um, scratching that lesion and aggravating the condition and this phenomenon is known as Cobner's phenomenon now there are six P's of lichen planus firstly it is planar or it is flat secondly it is polygonal in shape purple in color it is itchy lesion that's why we call it as pruritic then uh, lesions are papules and plaques now there are two more syndromes associated with lichen planus so the first one was greenspan syndrome and now the second one is vagino gingival syndrome in which the genitals are also affected by this condition and the third one is graham little syndrome in which alopecia occurs in some patients and it is also termed as lichen planus planopilaris planopilaris and some nail changes also takes place in this uh, graham little syndrome now as we know that lichen planus is mucocutaneous condition in which skin and mucous membrane both are affected but the oral manifestation of lichen planus may occur weeks or months before the appearance of the skin lesions this is most important fact now the oral manifestation of lichen planus so the lichen planus can be isolated in which only oral lesions are present no skin lesions are there there are many types of lichen planus but some of them are reticular papular plaque like erythematous erosive and hypertrophic let's discuss one by one now the first type that is the most common form of oral lichen planus which is reticular type so in reticular type there are slightly elevated fine whitish lines that produce a lace like pattern here you can see in this picture fine whitish elevated lines that produce a lace like pattern and here you can see a elevated dot also where these white lines are intersecting each other and it is known as stri of Wickham. and the stri is basically a network or can be annular or linear peripheral erythematous zone is seen though although the lesion is white in color but uh, peripherally you can see the lesion is erythematous um, and the sites that are most commonly involved are buccal mucus and lip now the second form is the papular form in which papules are seen papules are flat topped 0.5 to 1 mm in diameter it means they are small small lesions so these lesions are present all over the keratinized areas of oral mucosa and they will give a pebbled appearance they are white or gray in color and sometimes they will coalesce and they are present at the periphery of the reticular type of oral lichen planus so here you can see that they are present in the initial phase of the disease small white dots intermingle with the reticular form and there is whitish elevated lesion which is 0.5 to 1 mm in size now the third one is the plaque type in which uh, the sites that are most commonly involved are dorsum of the tongue and buccal mucosa if the tongue is involved then the papilla will be disappeared and it spreads in a concentric peripheral growth here you can see in this picture that this is a plaque type of uh, oral lichen planus in which the papules have coalesced to form a bigger lesion which is known as plaque now the next form is erythematous or atrophic form it appears as smooth red poorly defined area but not always with peripheral stri so the stri may or may not be present right and the sites which are affected are buccal mucosa palate and attached gingiva so here you can see the buccal mucosa is affected now there is one more picture of the erythematous or atrophic form of oral lichen planus in which 
attached gingiva is involved whenever the gingiva is involved it uh, it will be present in bilaterally symmetrical pattern most probably and all the quadrants are involved here you cannot make out whether it is oral lichen planus or any other condition because there is absence of any plaque or papules in that lesion so it resembles d squamative gingivitis so lesion may appear without plaques or papules and um, is present as d squamative gingivitis so we need to have a histological examination in order to decide whether it is lichen planus or not now the most disabling form of oral lichen planus in which white striations are there at the periphery so this is how you can differentiate between the atrophic type and the erosive type of the oral lichen planus here you can see um, buccal mucosa which is affected by this condition erosive type of lichen planus and also the tongue here you can see huge ulcers which are basically very very painful and irregular in size shape now the last one that is the hypertrophic form from the name you can make out that it is the elevated white lesion and uh, you cannot differentiate this lesion from the leukoplakia it resembles leukoplakia only so we need to do biopsy in order to establish diagnosis in the hypertrophic form now let's discuss the histological findings of oral lichen planus layer by layer so the first layer is stratum corneum which will show hyper parakeratosis or hyper orthokeratosis as we know that in parakeratosis there is presence of pycnotic nuclei whereas in orthokeratosis there is absence of nucleus so in lichen planus it can show both now the second layer is stratum granulosum which will show thickening now the third layer that is a stratum spinosum which will show thickening and it is known as acanthosis and intracellular edema will be there in the stratum spinosum now the fourth layer which is stratum basale there will be destruction of the basal cells due to which there will be liquefaction degeneration can be seen in this layer basically and sawtooth appearance of retipex nextly we have a band of sub epithelial lymphocytic infiltration so here in this diagram you can see there is hyperkeratosis there will be destruction of basal layer cells there will be a band of lymphocytic infiltration below the epithelium that we call as sub epithelial band of lymphocytic infiltration and there will be retipex or sawtooth appearance of the uh, retipex that are seen in lichen planus and the deeper connective tissue is basically normal now as we know that the basal layer cells are degenerated so uh, that degenerated cells now are known as colloidal bodies and they appear as eosinophilic eosinophilic globules and they are present at the interface of epithelium and the lamina propria right now we will discuss about the max joseph spaces so after the degeneration of the basal layer cells what happens there is also disruption of the uh, anchoring elements such as hemidesmosomes this will lead to the weakening of connective tissue and epithelial interface so this interface basically weakens and will lead to the formation of a histological cleft and this cleft is known as max joseph space which is seen in lichen planus now the differential diagnosis of oral lichen planus so the oral lesion may be a superficial resemblance to reticular lichen planus include lichenoid reaction leukoplakia candidiasis and lupus erythematosus now the erosive type of lichen planus may show resemblance to pemphigus cicatricial pemphigoid erythema multiforme syphilis and recurrent erythe so these are all the differential diagnosis of lichen planus basically now the malignant transformation as we know that lichen planus is a pre malignant condition but the actual overall frequency of 
getting transformed into um, a malignant uh, condition or oral squamous cell carcinoma is very low that is 0.3 to 3 percent and mainly erosive and atrophic forms are most commonly involved or undergo malignant transformation. Now the treatment of oral lichen planus. So as we know that lichen planus is an autoimmune condition. So there is no cure for this condition. So whatever is prescribed or done, it is done in order to give a symptomatic relief to the patient. So the steroids are given or vitamin A analog can be given certain drugs or surgical therapy or psychotherapy can be done. And for the symptomatic relief, we can provide anesthetics, topical anesthetics or um, analgesics and antihistaminics can be given. Right? For others, we can provide vitamin B12 that may also help in this um, resolving this condition basically. So thanks for watching.